What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Behind me we have our 2019 Ram Rebel and I've been putting in some work getting everything connected as far as our Switch Pros goes and getting all that installed into the cab so now we can run our accessories with the Switch Pros module. So let's go in the cab and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So for those of you who saw the last episode you know that we had some issues with our key fob not being detected and obviously did a lot of deconstruction in this truck to do all the ambient lighting and all the door panels and had to route wires everywhere and it was a whole lot of work. But to find out that it wasn't working properly after we were in there was a very, very unsettling feeling, but there's good news because now when I grab the door handle, it unlocks, which it didn't do before. And before I only had window control on the right rear. Passenger door didn't work, driver's door, left rear didn't work. And I only had unlock, I didn't have lock, which is also very weird. So I took my Z Automotive taser, which is always installed under the dash, went into the, the dash by using the key fob, pushing it in onto accessory to get it to go to accessory because it wasn't recognizing the key. And then I did a reboot. And then after the reboot, I tried the windows and everything worked except for this window. So I thought that was kind of odd. And I still had the panel off in this section right here where I'd have to run the wiring in for the ambient lighting. So I just double checked because obviously I hadn't put it back together yet. And lo and behold, I didn't have this door reconnected. It was, the plug was just sitting in the door and I didn't, didn't have that all put back together yet. So obviously I didn't check it and my mistake. So plugged in that door and I don't know if it was the reboot because directly after the reboot, it still said no key fob. But after this door was plugged in, the reboot had a few minutes to sit. Everything went back to normal. So that was my experience. Don't ask me how it happened, but we're back to normal. Everything's plugged in. Nothing is, there's no problems with it anymore, which is absolutely great news for me. So we'll hop up in the cab here. We still have a little bit of stuff to tie up. I do have some wires under the dash that need to go in their place. And I need to tie up this stuff for the center console and then it's gonna go back in. Six bolts go back in and this truck is back to normal. But now what we have here, I'm gonna turn the key to run. Switch Pro's module comes on. And now with our first button right here, we have our ambient lighting coming on. And yes, up here, we do have something new. We do have, close this door. We do have a new dash cam and it also has a rear cam as well. If you guys can see in that corner over there. So that was one of the things that I did record the entire installation on and had no sound. So basically the long and the short of that one is there's a wire that goes across the top here, down the A pillar under the hood hooked up to the battery and the ignition accessory source. And then we have a wire that goes up and over to the back camera and route that one at your own discretion. There is airbags and everything you need to keep clear of. You can run it down below if you want to, whatever which way you feel comfortable. For me, I'm very comfortable in the way, way that I did it, but you definitely don't want to cross an airbag when you run that wire. But we do have our ambient lighting working in all four doors. Definitely a whole lot nicer to see it at night. You can see how it all glows on the door panel. We do have it on the sides of our console here as well. And then on number two, we have our rock lights. Number three, we have our daytime running light for our 20 inch rough country light bar. And then on number four, I left this one blank for now. And then on number five, we have our Dixie Horn Dukes of Hazard for days. And then on number six, we have our reverse lights that we hooked up onto our hitch. And then up over here on number seven, we have full power for our light bar. And then we have one more available over here for number eight. And then when we turn our key off or push our start button to the off position, everything turns off with the key. 
anything that is turned on will turn off as well. I think there is a way I can go in. This thing is now talking to me. But there is a way I think you can go in and have some things run without the key on. I'm not entirely sure yet. I really need to play with the app for the Switch Pros. But definitely some things to be learned there as well. And also I do have some things to learn about the camera as well. I will show you guys the box of what that one is and we will have links in the description for the camera, the SD card, because you have to get one of the special ones that's good for the 4K camera because of the heat and all that kind of thing. Especially this being in the truck, it's gonna be in the sun. So you wanna have a card that's gonna be reliable. But yeah, we will go through all of the basics on that camera as well and give you guys that information. So this is the camera setup that I went with. This is the VOFO. A129 Pro Duo. You get two cameras, has Sony sensors. It also has the optional parking control, which is another wiring harness you have to order. It's like 15 bucks and it hooks up to an accessory so it knows when the truck is turned off. And then it actually will record before and after if the G sensor is set off by somebody bumping into your vehicle or somebody grabs a door handle or something like that, it will start recording when the truck is turned off, which is really nice because, well, if somebody wants to hit and run you, you're gonna have some of that footage and be able to have some sort of recourse. So as far as the Switch Pro's wiring goes, I have a cowl back on. We do have our Switch Pro's down in there. If you guys saw on the installation video of that, then I have the main wire going up to the battery. And then we have this large harness here. I try to tidy this up as best I could and get everything in a nice area. Obviously these wires are just for the trickle charger. And then we have some wiring going on this side of the battery, some going on this side for a camera. And then I'm just gonna loom everything, tie it all up in the back, make it as nice and neat as possible and watertight. So we do have a couple little options left to do with that. I do have to set the triggers so i have to put the one trigger for one of the marker lights just so the back lighting on the panel will dim when i turn the headlights on and the other one i'm going to run to one of the fog lights so when the fog lights turn off so will the light bar just to make it legal for pennsylvania inspection all that kind of stuff but that's something that i'm going to tackle once i get it back on the lift and probably when i get my spacers in which i have checked on they said they're supposed to be built last week so hopefully we'll see them midweek this week Otherwise, I'm going to have to call them again, kind of see what's going on with that. But that one and a half inches will probably line us up exactly with the rear, maybe a tiny little bit more in the front. But it'll give us more of a stance, which is kind of what I want. I don't like tires that stick out and throw mud all over the truck, but I do want to have a little bit more of an aggressive stance than the positive 18s give us with this truck. But I think that's going to do it for this video. I do apologize for our technical difficulties, which kind of interrupted the flow of everything but this kind of just sums it up on everything that we did next episode i'm going to be taking this thing outside kind of showing you guys how everything works when the whole truck is all back together nicely cleaned up detailed and looking like it should and we can actually go out and drive it have some fun with it because it's been a little while it's been a way too long since i've driven this thing and i can't wait to go out and have some fun with it and also the beaches have opened so there is an opportunity now that i can actually get this thing out on the sand and have some fun with it which is the whole reason i bought it in the first place so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and as always keep that hammer down so for those of you who stuck around this long in the video i got a little bonus footage if you guys want to see what's going on in the mezzanine kind of the build process up there this is just some underlayment that i bought i cut these to seven and a half inches to kind of get the most out of the wood that i bought i have a bunch more over there and I have a whole bunch more to cut, but this is gonna be a bit of a process, getting these all stained and color matched to whatever I wanna do. I was planning on doing like kind of a whitewash over top of this. This one here is a stain, and then I put a little bit of the gray over top. This is the gray, and then I put a little bit of the stain over top of that. And this one is just the like espresso stain by itself. So now what I'm gonna do is take some white paint and just rub it over top, and it's gonna give kind of like a distressed whitewash kind of look. And then we've got the color underneath that should show through a little bit, kind of give us a nice effect for our ceiling. So now we'll head upstairs because we do have some paint that I did the other day in here. That's why I've kind of been laxed on the uploads. I've been working in here and I didn't know if there was any real interest for seeing me paint a mezzanine, but I could be wrong, you never know. So here we go. We have, obviously, the rock has done on the front here of our bar area. We have our gray paint up. This is the empire color that you guys chose. And then down here, this fell down. Set that up there. We've got our wainscoting. That's why I didn't paint all the way to the bottom because we're gonna have this. I'm gonna paint this a nice white. So right now it's just primered. 
and then I'm gonna put trim on the top, and then I'm gonna put trim on the bottom, baseboards. And then we have, this is our flooring right here. So we're gonna have the gray flooring, break it up with the white, gray on the walls, and then we're gonna have the ceiling kind of in the shiplap DIY style with the different colors of stain and then the whitewash over top. I think it should look pretty nice. Also over here, I don't know if I showed you guys this before, but I just got some pipe and connectors from Home Depot and made this little kind of foot rail that we're actually gonna bolt to the bar itself. It's gonna cut some holes in the, in the rock and reinforce it from the back. Then that can sit there. And when you sit on the stools, you have a place to put your feet. And also I had a thought here of kind of breaking up the white and the gray. Obviously we're gonna have a piece of trim there and I could just paint that white, but then I think it would blend in kind of with our wainscoting. And I was thinking of maybe just going a little bit drastic and breaking it up with black and doing a black piece of trim, but definitely drop in the comments. What do you guys think? What color should we put on that top piece of trim to kind of break up these two colors? I think with the black going around the entire edge of the room, then we're gonna have a black refrigerator. The TV is obviously black. Black TV back there, black couches. I think it would be a really nice accent piece to kind of tie the whole room together. So then as we come through here, you guys have seen this before, we have our white cabinets. So it's gonna kind of go along with all of the wainscoting going across the room. And then our flooring is gonna run this way and then our ceilings are gonna run this way too. Our ceiling boards just kind of give it that, I don't know, lines, I guess. So it's not running this way, it's running this way. So the room looks bigger, I guess. It's my little take on interior decorating. And then this is gonna be the office, obviously. We're gonna put our TV up here and then I'm gonna build a desk. That's gonna go all the way in this area here. And then I can edit, do all that kind of stuff all in the same place, which is gonna be so nice to do because, well, we can film there, walk up the stairs, edit here, and it's all just kind of a one trip process. I don't have to drag my stuff back and forth to the house anymore and it's gonna make life so much more simple. And here's an aerial view of the shop and the disaster that it has become working on this truck. So yeah, this is kind of the way I am. I'm usually just flying, my head is going a mile a minute and I'm trying to get everything done and then tools and everything get left everywhere. So the plan is get this truck out of here all done, get everything back into the toolbox where it's supposed to be, clean up all this garbage, give this place a nice deep cleaning because well, we have more construction to do. Obviously some of the walls aren't finished and there's more to come on the build of the shop, that's for sure.